What is this? It, it's custom wood. We're adding custom wood in this video. All right, we found us back in Intelligent for more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom wood and basically nothing more to Minecraft. However, this is actually a quite foundational video because, oh, yeah, next time we're going to add signs and boats and those all require wood. So uh, let's get started. So for wood, as is per usual over here, we need a custom block class. And this custom block class is one of my favorites because it is absolutely ridiculous. And that's going to be happening in the custom package. And this is the mod flammable rotated pillar block. Now, the reason why we need this insane class is because the flammability is done by overriding certain methods in a block class. But what's also done in the block class is the right clicking functionality to strip a log. And that's what we're all going to do in this class. So this will extend the rotated pillar block class. We're going to hover over this and create constructor matching super. And then we need to override four methods. The is flammable method. We want to override the get flammability method. We want to override the get fire spread method. And lastly, the get tool modified state method. Let's start from top to bottom. So the is flammable method is just going to return a true over here that will make our logs actually flammable. The get flammability is going to be five and the fire spread is also five. Those numbers are gotten from the fire block class. You can actually take a look at that if you press shift twice and put in fire block right here include non-project items. You can actually take a look at that. So let's then go down and then somewhere at some point, you're going to see the bootstrap method, which is going to have the set flammable. And you can see encouragement would be the flammability while flammability would be the fire spread. I guess that that's the other way around, I would assume. So encouragement is the fire spread while flammability is the flammability. At least I would hope so. Otherwise, the naming scheme here is a little bit weird, but there you go. So that is going to be the idea right here. And then the get tool modified state method actually is a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a deliberate error right here because to actually do this, we need to first we need to first register our blocks. So that's going to happen in the mod blocks class. So let's take a look at that. We're going to have a couple of blocks. So let's first of all duplicate the gem polishing station. This is going to be the pine underscore log. And then this is going to be the pine underscore log. This is going to be the, the mod flammable rotated pillar block. We're going to copy the oak underscore log. Make sure to always copy the specific block that is like associated with this. So this is the pine log. So we're going to copy the oak log. It is not going to have no occlusion, but we will just add a strength over here of three. Let's say that's going to be fine. It's going to be totally OK. And I believe that that should be it. Then we're going to duplicate this four more times and then a further two times. So this is going to be the pine wood and then same here, pine wood. This is going to copy oak wood. Very important. And then here we're going to have the stripped variant. So there's going to be stripped underscore pine underscore log. And of course, let's not forget to change the name right here. That's quite important. Stripped underscore pine underscore wood right here then. And then this is going to be the stripped oak log. And this is the stripped oak wood. There we go. And then these ones are going to be the planks and the leaves. So this is the pine planks of course, changing the name here as well, pine underscore planks. And then here we got the pine leaves and here we have the pine leaves. And of course, they're also going to properly copy the planks and the leaves respectively. The leaves here do not have a strength. I believe that that's fair. And then I also and I also think that the planks have a lower strength, although we can just remove it entirely. That's fine. Also, both planks and leaves are not a mod rotated pillar block. The planks are just a normal block while the leaves are a leaves block. Now, both of these actually also require an anonymous class right here. After the second closing parenthesis, we want to add curly brackets and those curly brackets basically denote an anonymous class. And here we would then we will then overwrite the same is flammable method, the get flammability method, as well as the get fire spread method. In theory, if you have multiple planks, then I highly recommend you just make a plank block class and basically then override those methods in there. If you only have one or two planks, using an anonymous class here is totally fine. And you can see here the fire spread is five, flammability is 20. And what I can actually do is I can actually copy the entire thing right here, including the curly brackets, and then I can get that into the leaves. And the leaves actually are a little bit different. They are actually have a flammability of 60 and a fire spread of 30. There you go. And that is basically going to be what we need here. 
And then we can finally go back to the mod flammable rotated pillar block. And then the get tool modified states method. So if context dot get item in hand dot get item is instance of an axe item, if this is the case, then we want to return something different depending on the state. So state dot is mod blocks dot pine underscore log dot get. But if this is the case, then we're going to return mod blocks dot stripped pine log dot get dot default state dot set value of the axis to state dot get value of the axis. There you go. Now, the reason why we have to do this is if we don't also add the value of the block state axis, then the issue is that, let's say your pine log is like horizontal and I strip it, the default state is going to make it vertical and then that's, you know, not going to be quite what you want. So that's why we need to do this. And then I can just duplicate this and put it in here. And then here I'm going to say the pine wood and then this is going to be the stripped pine wood. Awesome. If you have multiple different blocks of logs and stripped logs, then at some point you can also make a map, right? That just maps from a block to another block. And then just be like, hey, you know, if it's this block, then turn into this block. Very straightforward things, like nothing too crazy in terms of Java. And then here we just want to call again the super over here for the get to a modified state method. And that's going to be fine. With that done, the next thing I want to do is just add it to the creative mode tab because that is just something that might just, you know, I sometimes this this just slips my mind and I may or may not forget it. So let's just do it because now it's fresh in my mind. So I'm like, you know, let's just add it, including the lengths as well as the leaves over here. There you go. But we're not leaving just yet because we still have some stuff to do. And the stuff is going to be down here. Let's first of all do all of the translation stuff. You know, nothing too crazy. Pine log, pine planks. It should be all fairly self-explanatory. And of course, the textures as well. Those will be available to you for download in the description below. That's going to be all of the different pine textures, including the stripped ones over here. So there we go. And that's actually all that we need down here. The rest then happens in data gen. Let's start with the loot, because that's actually one of the things that a few people are sometimes a little bit confused by. Basically, most of the stuff is just going to drop itself, right? So the logs, the wood is going to drop itself. The stripped variants of it is are going to drop themselves. Now, I do want this this way. There you go. The planks are going to drop themselves. However, oh, wait a second. What about the leaves? What about the leaves? The leaves are going to be this.add, modblocks.pine underscore leaves.get. And then the second parameter, once again, is going to be a function here from block to builder. And here we want to call the create leaves droppers method, passing in the block, passing in mod blocks dot. And usually right here, it would be the sapling. In this case, we're just going to drop a sapphire block for the time being. This usually is a sapling. We haven't added the sapling just yet. So we're going to do that in a future tutorial. And then here we're going to get the normal leaves sapling chance. Right. We're also going to add a to do change to sapling because, of course, right, we once again, we don't have the sapling just yet. If you've already created the sapling block, then of course, this would be the sapling block. Keep that in mind. Then let's go from the top all the way to the bottom. So we first of all, have the block state provider right here, which is going to be fairly straightforward. A lock block right here. And then we can just say mod blocks dot pine lock dot get dot cast. And we're going to cast this to a rotated pillar block. Easy as that. We can then and then all of the rest, a little bit more complicated. Then we have an axis of block right here. With this is going to be the mod blocks dot pine underscore wood dot get dot cast once again to a rotated pillar block. And then after the second closing parentheses, comma, block texture of mod blocks dot pine log dot get. After the second closing parentheses, again, block texture mod blocks dot pine log dot get. Reason being, of course, the pine wood is the wood text, right? Like the bark of the wood. So that is why you basically want to specify two times the log texture here in this case. And the stripped variants are even a little bit more complicated. We're just going to duplicate this two times. This is going to be the stripped log and this is going to be the stripped wood. In the first case, you can just put in the stripped log right here. And then you can do, put in the stripped log right here as well, because that should refer to the following texture. This one right here, which is the outside over the top. We have to specify ourselves. So that is going to be the second block texture. It's not going to actually call the block texture method, but it's going to make a new resource location of tutorial mod.mod ID and then block slash stripped 
underscore pine underscore log underscore top, referring, like I said, to this texture. And then in the stripped wood, if I recall correctly, you just wanted to also refer to the stripped log right here as it's basically only this stripped texture. So for all of these, we need to make a custom block item, which is just going to be this one right here. It's just going to be a custom block item method that I've made. Fairly straightforward. And as always, of course, all of the code is available to you. So no worries at all. Description below in the GitHub repository. And that's going to be the pine log. We can duplicate this. I'm just going to be the wood, the stripped log, and the stripped wood right here. And then we also have block with item. I believe that we already have that method. Yes, we do. Mod blocks dot planks and when it comes to the leaves another custom method because well i don't know listen i i at this point i just um i i have sort of given up on on the methods that uh, forge provides us in the data gen and uh, maybe with neoforge this is going to get a little bit better but we'll see maybe i can pull some strings there because my god this is this is ridiculous uh, but once again the method is available to you the, for the leaves block so no worries at all you can see it basically has the render layer render type cutout already in there, the specific leaves parent over here, and that should be that. And that is all we need in this case. We're not done quite just yet because we also need some tags, and the tags here are the block tags. First and foremost, this is going to be this.tag, block tags.logs that burn right here, and the logs that burn are mod blocks dot pine underscore log dot get. This is not going to be tags, just an add over here. That's going to be fine. Add pine wood and we also want to add the stripped log and the stripped wood right here you can end this with a semicolon there you go we can also add this dot tag block tags dot planks and of course here we want to add the mod blocks dot pl planks dot get bam there you go and going even further we can go to the item tag generator and actually do the same thing so this dot tag item tags dot logs that burn right here you can see I, i'm i'm unsure if you really have to add them to both because i think that one of them is included in the other uh, however you know it i don't think that it is a bad thing to add them to both here in this case or otherwise we're just going to get an error i mean that that also works totally fine and then we would be like oh okay maybe we only do not want to add them to one of them and then here they need the as item here at the end that's actually quite important because otherwise it's not going to recognize them as an item kind of a bummer bear here but there you go as item and then here as well as item and then lastly this dot tag item tags dot planks again and the reason why we want to add this a hundred percent is because then the tags allow us to the planks tag allow us in the item tags to actually to use these planks to craft sticks and and crafting tables and stuff like that so basically all of the things that are available to us that are non-wood specific so that's all great and fine. And these are pretty much the most important things that we wanted to add here. Lastly, right, all of the rest of the recipes, like making planks from the logs, those all have to be added manually over here or, you know, with methods that already exist. I will skip that step because in this case, you know, that it should be trivial, even if, you know, you don't find methods that use it using the shape of the shapeless methods right here. You know, that should be fairly self-explanatory and pretty freaking easy to do. But with that, all of our different things are done. So we can run the data over here, have all of the JSON files be generated. And once that has run through, well, we can look at our wood for the first time. So let's see. All right, friends, us back in Minecraft. And as you can see, all of our wood has been added to Minecraft, as you can see. And doesn't it just look absolutely freaking fantastic? I really like the pine planks over here. They have a very certain texture, but also the pine leaves. I mean, look at the awesomeness of this. I mean, that is just, that is ridiculously cool. And what we can also do is, well, you know, uh, first of all, also, we got a pine cone, which is, you know, that, that does fit quite well over here. And let's just get a flint and steel and, uh, oh boy, this is this going to work? Of course it's going to work, because that is what we programmed, right? This is why we have the mod flammable rotated pillar block and all of that uh, jazz. So let's, uh, you know, there you go. So that definitely also works. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Custom wood done, well, basically for our signs and boats uh, for the next time. And when I say next time, I mean next time, because in this video, we'll add custom sign to Minecraft. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.